All right, so check this out. We, these door bottoms didn't look that bad until I stripped the door. And then I saw the side here. Some rust hole in the inner panel. So I just cut it open to take a look at everything and kind of see what's going on. How heavy the surface rust is on the inside, which isn't that bad. But what I think I'm going to do is it cut out a little bit further and then just cut through one layer here because I need a little bit better metal. It's kind of better about right here, right where I'm at, but I just need a little bit further out. And make the inner panel first, then I'll just make an outer piece. Okay, so in the first part, what I'm doing is just cutting away the uh, outer panel and I'm going to leave a little bit of like about a quarter of an inch of the inner um, showing so that I can weld to that first and change this little section. Now instead of doing a butt on the inside panel what I did is I butted um, where the two panels connect. I don't know if you kind of understand that the u-shaped portion i butted that portion and then uh, on the other part of it um, for ease i went ahead and lapped it to the inside and then it can just get a little skim coat of filler to finish the repair which is much easier than trying to butt in a piece trying to make the exact shape and butt it in there is going to take a lot more time you know a lot of people you know want to see that they want to see you butt in the whole thing and honestly you know the, the time you spend doing that you're you know you're basically taking time away from the rest of your life you know there's wouldn't you rather drive the car a bit you know instead of spending all your time trying to make this one thing perfect you know honestly it's uh, there's a lot of OCD issues in this type of business and you know the finished product looks perfect either way so what is the point of making it perfect on the inside where you can't see it? That's what I always say. So anyway, I went ahead and fitted a piece on there. If you see, I bent the uh, top edge. And then, uh, or I didn't bend it yet. I think I yeah, actually bent it. And I'm cleaning it out, trying to get all the, the surface rust out of there. I'm going to actually use a rust um, inhibiting or rust converter on all that stuff after because there's a little bit of surface rust all the way along there it's a good way a lot of people try and sandblast uh, if you try to sandblast inside there you would probably wouldn't be able to get it coated properly and you might end up with rust issues later so uh, it's best to use a rust converter or a you know like a pour 15 even some something like that will protect it for many many years it'll probably in your lifetime probably never rust again you know, a lot of people try and worry about the next lifetime, and, you know, honestly, you know, who knows how they're going to take care of the car. Unfortunately, you're dead, and uh, when they're, they have the car, are they going to treat it the same way you did? You don't know that. So, it's best to just think about your life. You'd be well past that. Anyway, doing it this way. So I've lapped, I, I butted the edge and I've kind of cleaned it up a little bit. Now I'm lining it up and if you notice the corner, I actually bent it to kind of wrap around a bit so that it gets that whole corner and there'll be, of course there'll be a bit of stack metal there. And people, some people say it rusts between the two. Now, I've never had that issue. Uh, I'm actually going to reach in there with seam sealer and uh, also like I said the rust treatment and a few other things to kind of keep uh, water from getting between the two layers. It's really important to do that. So reach in there with some seam sealer, cock it like a boat, it should be fine. So I've just, uh, I've lap welded this. You can actually use uh, a bunch of independent spot welds if you want, uh, but I went, went ahead and welded the whole edge. So I can grind it down uh, and like I said, it's very, very little filler there, really won't be much. Actually, I grind down, I, I welded the whole edge so that I can actually feather up into the area without even putting filler on that edge. It'll be just, just a little, like a transition part of filler. And it's on the bottom of the door, guys. So, when it's on the bottom of the door, it's kind of crazy to 
spent a lot of time on something like that. It's not something you can, it's not visual. There's nothing there you can see. But you just want it to be you know, strong and not look terrible. You know, when you open, if you ever look underneath the door, you'll want to see it. You know, a big repair. And you won't be able to when I'm done. We'll show it done at, here with Primer on it after I'm done. A little bit of filler. It was only about a sixteenth of an inch of filler on there when I was all done. That's it. So clamping it together, welding the edge, um, and then I'm going to go ahead and make the other piece. So if you make it in multiple pieces, it's much easier to do your metalwork and then just weld it all together. Uh, I remember when I was, I've always done it this way. I've done it this way for many years. Made multiple pieces to make stuff. If you really want to see stuff that fits really perfectly done the same way, there's always Fitzy's metal channel. He does the same same type of thing, but of course he does a little nicer job than I do. I'm just I'm doing it kind of the faster way. So because I do use filler, a lot of stuff he doesn't. You know, like I said, I I don't really see the point of that when I can have something that will last just as long with a little bit of good quality filler on it. Um, so. In fact, people go, oh, well, lead lasts forever. And there's lead, there was lead filler in the store that was all cracked. I had to remove it all. So nothing lasts forever. So I made this little piece, and then, of course, I'm bending. I'm slit cutting the top edge. If you can't really see what I'm doing, I'm slit cutting the top edge so that I can bend it. So that it'll bend the corner. And then when I get it in there, I'm actually going to weld that up. If you can see that clearly in the video, I'm not sure. I slowed this down. I had another, I had it in another sector on another video, and I just decided to make this into a separate video. If you have a repair like this, you can kind of walk yourself through it with an aeration a little bit. So I've cut this piece. I made it fit. I made it wrap around. Uh, then I'm going to butt the edge. Uh, heading upward on the door that's the bottom of the door so I'm gonna butt that top edge it's really nice and tight and then um, then I'm gonna uh, lap again the lower portion so the top edge is butted the bottom the inner side is is lapped watch in my other videos I do this a lot I'll use a lap and a butt both uh, so the the critical part will be butted to where um, it it will fit the panel outside panel will fit and the inside portion will be lapped um, partly for strength it's a little stronger that way but um, not really it's mostly because of the uh, so you can see that little tab there that I'm welding up now I'm actually welding um, that whole thing into one piece so I can grind it down and like I said finish the rest with just a little bit of filler won't do much at all this video is in four times so I just figured it'd be a little easier to watch but it's fat it, it's slow enough to where you can see what's going on <clears throat> Yeah, grind it all down, take the welds down. You know, people think you got to get a really beautiful, perfect weld. You know, it's really not that necessary. As long as it's holding and the rest you do with the grinder, that's fine. You don't need to have, like, be the highest skilled welder where everything looks like, a, you know, TIG welded museum piece. You know, and once it's ground down, if it's on there and it's strong and you got enough heat on it to where it, uh, you get penetration all the way through that's the most important thing and then not get too hot where you warp the heck out of the metal um, this is the harbor freight titanium welder so it actually uh, it actually keeps a pretty low uh, manageable heat you can turn it down far enough or when I was doing stuff like this with my 220 welder I'd choose to do more lap welding because um, it was hard to really hard to butt weld with so if you're having that issue um, it might be a good idea to check out one of these welders they're not expensive 
what happened is my uh, my 220 welder, the fan went out in it, and I just decided I was using this other crap 110 welder, and it was just so bad that I went down to Harbor Freight and just bought one temporarily while I was waiting for the parts. And then uh, I started using it more, and I actually like it better than my 220 welder for the sheet metal. So I'm just using that. Back there, it's because it's inverter technology. The inverter technology is, you know, a little better for cold welding, you know, for getting stuff not so hot. And it still melts the metal, but it doesn't transfer the heat as much into the other panel. So on this one, because I didn't have the patience to go through and spot weld and then move, you know, six inches and spot weld and then cool and then go back and spot weld and spot weld and cool and spot weld and spot weld and cool by using an air blower. If you have that kind of patience, go for it. Um, I don't. So um, what I chose to do is um, is just, you know, do spot, do the spot welds, you know, a little bit. Did some, did a little bit here, a little bit there, whatever. And it warped the panel a little bit. And then I just hammered it straight and got it to where, like I said, I got about a sixteenth of an inch of filler on there. That's about it. If you're under a quarter, it's going to last. And you put it on rough metal. You know, when you put it on, and you're using good quality filler, like I'm using AG47 filler from USC. One of the best um, inexpensive filters there is. It's less than $30, and it's actually really good quality you know good quality um, good high adhesion so so this piece i'm butt welding in this entire piece um, i've made this really quick i use a sheet metal bender just bent one corner marked it bent it marked it bent it and then uh you know just went ahead and did a little bit of trimming to get it to fit and if you notice i'm taking a straight edge making sure that it's following everything right Making sure that it's all in there straight as possible. Um, I didn't use butt welding clamps on it because I, sometimes I, I don't like to use them because you, sometimes you have too wide of a gap with those. Um, sometimes I will. If I have to, I will. You know, there's some, certain panels I can. So what I did is I just reached inside and then tightened up the butt and made them so that they're exactly so you can run your fingernail over it. So, and then, uh, and then just spot welded right where I had it and wherever it lines up I spot weld so I just line it up and then spot weld it line it up spot weld it line it up spot weld it until I have enough of enough spot welds on there that I can uh, go back and fill in the voids so you know, get a bunch of spot welds on there uh, my welder settings on the Harbor Freight welder were like 13.4 with clean metal you can do it that low um, if it's dirty I have to turn it up a bit but um so it's better to have clean metal with this if you're gonna butt weld um, but I had 13.4 and about 156 on the wire speed with a 0.025 wire um, I'm also not using the Harbor Freight wire um, use good quality welding store wire and don't get stuff from Harbor Freight for that it, it really makes a difference on this welder like on my other welder it doesn't care it, the 220 welder it just you just turn the wire speed up it doesn't care it doesn't even but this welder for some reason it's a lot pickier about the wire I guess because the inverter stuff I don't I don't really know and my I had my inducting induction at five right in the middle so I was getting really small beads to really tight on most of it, except a few places I got moundy because I could, you know, burned a hole. You know, it's, that's good to know. If you burn a hole, that tells you you're getting uh, some penetration. If you're not burning holes, sometimes you might not be getting penetration all the way through. That's it's really important to get that penetration. So I'm drilling holes to do the final weld, and then welding up the corner. You see right here, I'm welding up the corner, and I'm spot welding it um, I'm plug welding the uh, finished area and then what I did is I left a little bit of extra overhang and right here that's what I'm doing is trimming that um, to be level so that it's exactly like the original piece 
So you just always leave a little bit of extra metal hanging off on something like that and then just grind it to the thing. Sometimes you can put a piece of tape on it, but I didn't need to. So there's with filler. We're almost done. So anyway, I'll be talking to you guys in the next video. And please like, share, and subscribe. Let's see your comments. And hopefully this helps you get through a repair like this and learn some cool stuff. So I'm kind of going slow-mo right here to kind of let you see. Um, it, it's pretty straight. I didn't really go through and try to get it really straight. Uh, I was just going to do a lot with blocking. So I do a lot of my fill work with blocking. A lot of guys do it only with um, filler. But um, I do a lot with uh, blocking and priming. And that's why I've been doing it for years and don't have failures. People think if you put on primer too thick. If you use the wrong product, yeah, you will, you'll have issues. If you use a really good... Uh, high build primer uh, like Tamco has a really good their uh, 5310 is a really good high build urethane primer so you can check that one out maybe I'll put a uh, I don't know if I'll get a link in this one but anyway I'll talk to you guys in the next video Looks like we're coming up to the end uh, please like share and subscribe and see your comments talk to you then